Well, hello there and welcome back to the channel and thanks so much for tuning in and again, welcome to the new subscribers. Thanks so much for being there, everybody. And again, for liking, sharing and subscribing these to these videos. It all helps to help the channel grow and gets the information to people who may need it. There's a lot of people who have gone through narcissistic abuse and severe narcissistic abuse at that. And uh, you never know who's suffering out there. So I really appreciate you guys. Uh, subscribing and uh, being loyal viewers to this channel and also sharing this information. Now today we're going to be talking about how people invalidate your experience and why you should stay away from some people who are invalidating of what you've gone through. Now there's a lot of ways that people can invalidate your experience but for the most part you know people can say that they care and you know your friends your family co-workers whoever but they really have not gone through the devastation of severe narcissistic abuse by you know a, a malignant narcopath somebody that is uh, high on the spectrum of narcissism a malignant narcissist and who also behaves uh, has behavior of a psychopath or a sociopath as well they're extremely cruel they do things that are inhumane they torment they play games mind games on their targets uh, you, it's so the target feels that, as though they're going crazy it's like you're in a nightmare one of those psycho thrillers and you can't wake up that's what it feels like and I'm sure a lot of you can relate And if so put it in the comments below if you understand what I mean by that because um, it's really hard to explain to people who have not experienced it. So I'm validating your experience if you are suffering from PTSD and in the healing stages. And uh, again, put it in the comments below if you understand what I'm talking about. It helps to validate viewers' experiences around the globe here who know exactly what I'm talking about. The satanic type of behavior, the inhumane type of behavior that no one no one of God would ever put someone through. So if somebody is invalidating your experience after the fact, or if you're still dealing with a severe narcissist and you're seeking help and people don't validate you and your experience, uh, I would stay away from them. And it's better to seek out people that understand that have gone through what you have gone through and validate your experience rather than those that are just self-serving. They just want you to be the person you were before. They want you to get over it very quick. They're very impatient and you know they're showing signs of narcissism. They're not thinking of you and your feelings. They're just wanting what they want out of you and they really don't have time to deal with your feelings or anything you've gone through. So stay away from those types. You've already had enough of the dismissal and, and devaluing of your feelings. And uh, really seek out those who care genuinely and understand what you have gone through and those who are patient. So your circle's going to get smaller, guys. I hate to tell you, but you know, hopefully it will be temporary. You, you'll be able to spot the people who are like-minded and have a similar heart to you. And pray for God to put those people in your life, and he will. Uh, he will give you the gift of discernment so you can spot the people who are genuine in life and move forward as a better person with better discernment as to who you let into your world. But uh, I will give you here some examples of um, invalidation that you should pay attention to if you're talking to somebody and um, whether you're wondering if they are validating you or not or whether it's safe for you to share your experience with them. You know, watch out for these signs. If they simply say something like, oh, don't be sad, uh, just be happy. <laughs> now, that's red flag number one. If somebody has been through trauma and PTSD or is going through any type of uh, depression, you don't say just be happy or get over it. it it's not uh, a valid um, supportive comment by them and it could trigger you. You know, it, it's, it's, it's invalidating your experience. It's making light of it. It's basically telling you it's no big deal and just put a smile on and forget about it. You know, like it's that easy to do. They obviously don't know narcissistic abuse, guys. They obviously haven't been 
at the hands of one of Satan's representatives on earth. Because if they, if they ever had that experience, believe me, they would understand what you're going through and they would have compassion because it is horrific. Now, sometimes they'll say, if they say something like, well, you're just, you're over, you obviously are overreacting. I don't think it was that bad. That's an invalidating statement right there. If they're doubting that it happened, or if they think you're exaggerating or it's just drama, <laughs> then I wouldn't be around that person, at least while you're healing, guys. You know, it, it's a red, huge red flag. They're invalidating you again. They're dismissing you. They're gaslighting you. So pay attention to that statement. If they try to just give a Pollyanna uh, answer, such as, you know, well, everything happens for a reason, and it was meant to happen that way, so you learn, they just kind of make light of it with a Pollyanna statement, that isn't exactly being compassionate either. They might mean well, but it, it may trigger you, because again, I don't think anyone's meant to deal with uh, a demonic representative. <laughs> I don't think anyone's meant to... Uh, lose years of their life and their health and to be so damaged as uh, people are when they suffer from narcissistic abuse. I don't think it was in God's plan that, that that was your fate. I think that, you know, we're given free will and we didn't see the red flags and the adversary has predators out there that will look for good empathetic people to take down and we have to be uh, vigilant and uh, pay attention to those signs. And if we did not have the information or if we chose the flesh over uh, our other values, then many times these um, situations happen. You know, God gives us free will and we let our guard down. And the adversary steps in and does his thing. But for somebody to, you know, just uh, make light of it with a type of poly and an answer, um, tells you they really don't know the depths of what happened. A lot of people will offer information that they're stronger than you, you know, and don't pay any attention to that. They have no idea how they would handle somebody from the adversary if they had to deal with the same person you did. Uh, I think they would be in shock, basically, right? So you know what I'm talking about with that. People think they know what you went through, but they don't. And they'll make themselves out to be stronger and saying you're just too sensitive or you take things too personally, but they don't. You know, they're stronger than you. They don't pay any mind and they'll just be dismissive like that. Or they'll say you should have handled it differently. Well, I would have done this. I would have done that. Again, you don't need to hear that when you're suffering from PTSD, from narcissistic abuse. That's invalidating. That's shaming you, basically, saying that you handled it wrong, that they would have handled it better, that they're superior to you. Well, you already went through that with a narcissist. You don't need that in a friend. Any friend of yours would not pull that superiority card on you. They would be empathetic. They would listen to you. They would be understanding that the adversary has representatives in the world that are covert. You know, they're, they're walking around like normal human beings. You know, Satan uses people closest to you to hurt you. And many times people that, you know, come as a wolf in sheep's clothing. And if a friend or a coworker or a family member can't understand that, if they think that they're just smarter and they wouldn't pick up on that, that they would know better, that, uh, you know, they're not as sensitive as you, that, you know, they would be able to deflect all of this abuse. You know, I would, I would stay away from that person. That's, again, really invalidating your pain, your experience, and it's also shaming you. So heads up about that type of comment as well. Uh, if somebody, you know, tells you that you probably misunderstood things you heard, or that it was probably just misunderstandings between the two of you. Many times they're trying to be diplomatic, but that doesn't help you either because then you start second guessing yourself. Again, it's like gaslighting that the situation wasn't as bad as it was and uh, that perhaps, you know, there was a misunderstanding and, and that might 
really convince you to go back and take a second look at the relationship or start second guessing yourself. And that isn't good at all. Uh, you see the demonic manifesting on a daily basis and uh, somebody's telling you to just forget about it. You know, if, if somebody had a supernatural experience or something, a poltergeist or something horrific that was uh, some demonic manifestation that happened in their life, and it happened just once, I don't think they could forget about it. But imagine targets of narcissistic abuse who deal with this type of warfare on a daily basis with somebody that is a true malignant uh, narcopath. Uh, these types exhibit demonic behavior on a daily basis many times. You are exposed over and over again to the evil of the adversary. And to say, just forget it, or, you know, just move on, get over it, uh, that's a real Pollyanna answer right there. It shows you again that the person is being narcissistic themselves. They, they want you to get over it quickly, become the person you were before for their own reasons. You know, they miss the person you were. They want that person back. They want you to be all better in a second. And we know that does not happen. Now, eventually, yes, I'm going to have videos on how to get your confidence back. So stay tuned uh, for that. And, uh, th but the thing is, people don't allow you what you are entitled to. And you are entitled to feel your emotions. You are entitled to acknowledge what happened. You are entitled to grieve the losses that you uh, incurred. And you are entitled to heal in peace without people second guessing you or doubting you or gaslighting you or uh, really invalidating your experience. You've already had enough of that, guys. So I can't emphasize this enough. During your healing process, be around positive, kind, empathetic, compassionate people who know your worth, who celebrate who you for who you are and value you. Now, the circle will get smaller, guys. There's no doubt. But it's better to have a few or one person that you can trust with your value rather than having a whole bunch of people um, discredit you and invalidate you and uh, gaslight you and cause more harm in your life. And chances are they will trigger a lot of you know, past emotions, because they're doing the same thing uh, that you had done to you by the narcissist. They're devaluing you and invalidating your feelings. So during your healing process, the one person that understands is the Lord. And I can't emphasize that the Holy Spirit will empower you to have the strength to be alone for a while, to really... Um, you know, go deep within yourself and strengthen your relationship with the Lord during your time alone. And that's okay. If you can't be alone, that's a problem. Strong people can be alone. Eagles soar in the sky and fly alone. Uh, you know, eagles soar alone. And so will you uh, eventually. But the healing process, many times, you have to dig deep, you have to, um, you know, gather information, educate yourself, reflect on the past, grieve, and heal. And when you reach out to other people, or when you start spending time with others, make sure that you are safe with them. Make sure that they are not also dismissing your feelings and invalidating your experience and that they are a safe haven, <laughs> hence the name of this channel, for you, that they see your gifts and your talents, and that they understand what happened, that they understand what narcissistic abuse is, and how devastating it is, and how traumatic it is. And then there's the old, well, just forget about it, move on. <laughs> wow, don't you wish it was that easy? Or they say, stop living in the past. Well, if things aren't resolved, they're going to keep surfacing, guys. You know, little do they know that if they just had a kind, compassionate heart and listened and let you uh, grieve and let you air 
uh, your grievances about what happened and your losses, then you won't be talking about it again. You would have released it. You would have uh, vented. You would have um, uh, really told your story and gotten it off of your chest. And then it becomes less and less and less until it's gone. People just don't want to take the time. They are very self-centered. They're very narcissistic themselves, and they don't have the compassion and empathy to just hear somebody out. They want it better fast. They want to go and do what they want to do that's fun, and they want to go la, 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 and cover their ears. They don't want to hear it. And those are the people you want to avoid, especially during the healing process. You really don't want to be dismissed, devalued, gaslit, or told that it was nothing. Basically, they're devaluing your experience and they're invalidating your experience by thinking that uh, you can get over it without talking about it. Now, again, discern who you talk about it with. That's the whole point of this video. Find a trusted therapist. Find a counselor. Um find somebody who has gone through it. This is why I offer guidance, phone calls, and appointments, uh, because uh, I know in my journey, and I hear this from a lot of other people who have gone through it, and viewers especially, that um, unless somebody has gone through it, they really don't get it. So be very careful when it comes to a therapist or someone um, that you're talking to about your experience, but especially to those people around you that will invalidate your experience, dismiss it as nothing, tell you you're too sensitive, call you dramatic, tell you to get over it in a second or just forget about it. You want to forget about them for a while, okay? Because obviously they're not ones that are that who will be helpful in your healing journey. So stay away from those if you have to uh, minimize your friendships and uh, a lot of you are self-isolating anyway. Use this time to get in the Word of God. Talk to God. Uh, develop your spirituality with the Lord. Learn how to be alone. There's strength in being alone for a while. Not forever, not indefinitely. That's unhealthy. But during your healing process, you have to learn how to be alone. You can handle anything if you can learn and manage how to be alone and actually like yourself and develop your relationship with the Lord. You can conquer anything that happens in this world and anything that happens to you in life if you have a sense of self, can be alone, and you can develop your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. All of that factors into a very confident and um, a very uh, self-aware person in the world. So I hope this was helpful, everybody, and uh, let me know what you think in the comments. And uh, again, always helpful to like, share, and subscribe, guys. I'm hoping to get the subscriber numbers up. And uh, again, if anybody would like one-on-one -on -one Christian guidance, please email me at angelhavenministry at gmail.com, and I will email you information on how to do that. And again, follow on Facebook and rumble on rumble, guys. It all helps. And uh, I hope to have a video out, as I said, on gaining your confidence back after the narcissist. So stay tuned for that, and I will see you next time, guys. Take care, and God bless.